In this video, I'm going to show how to automatically calculate your absolute uncertainties uh, in an average when using the half range method. And there are some nifty Excel functions which allow that to be really quick and easy so that you don't manually go in and select the max and min. And then I'm going to show you how to uh, automatically calculate using Excel the max and the min slopes and how to display that in the graph. So, first thing, and this is data that I've used before in other videos, so everything is finished. Here were my independent, this was my independent variable. My dependent variable was the final velocity, and I took three trials at each value of mass. I averaged the values of the final velocity, and then I linearized my data, that's what this is, and I found that the power, there was a power relation, and the power was 1.3. So the power function was defined by the power of 1.3, and then I took all of my masses, right, my independent variable, and I raised it to the 1.3 power, and I put it into this final graph. But I need to know what the absolute uncertainty is in my averages, in my y values. And we use the max minus min divided by 2 method, which is simply called the half range method. And, you know, normally we would say equals open parentheses, and you would find the max, and then you would subtract the min, close the parentheses, divided by 2. Well, there's a nifty way for Excel to find the max and the min for you. You simply type in max, and then we are going to put inside of the parentheses, we're going to put the, arg uh, the range that we want Excel to find the max of. Right, so we say to Excel, find the maximum from these three values, and it plugs it in right there. There's another function which does the same thing for min, and inside the parentheses we highlight the same range, and boom, there it is. You can drag this down and fix the borders. Right, let's clear the border and then put the outside border. <laughs> and let me add some decimal places so we can see the rounding process. And let me add some decimal places here. So each of these absolute uncertainties is only permitted to have one sig fig, according to the high school rules uh, of IB that it currently exist. So we have to look at each of these and round to the first sig fig. So this becomes 0.2, right? This, the next three are easy to round. This one is 0.4. Ah, look at that, 0.050. 0.05 already has one sig fig, so we're allowed to leave that as it is. And all of these are going to get rounded one sig fig. And 0.05, um, we could leave it like that, or if we want, we could say, look, this seems like an underestimate given that the others range from 0.1 to 0.4. So using this rationale, uh, you, could, you could say that most likely this should be rounded up to 0.1. You should never round in any way that results in an uncertainty of zero. Never do that. That's not good. If you have an uncertainty of 0.01 here, you know, you're allowed to say, look, the other uncertainties are 0.1 to 0.4. 0 0.01 is way too small, right? That's kind of just luck that the uncertainty was that small, so you can round it up to 0.1 even. Right? As long as you give some justification, you're allowed to round how you see fit. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there. All of these values, right, the average final velocity, well, this is the uncertainty. This is the uncertainty in this value. So this value has to have the same number of decimal places as the, the uncertainty. So we have to round it to that. And likewise, for the rest of these, they need to have just one decimal place. This one has two decimal places, and these all have one, because their uncertainty has one. OK. Now we're going to make the max and min slopes. So you type in max slope, min slope, and put x1, x2, and y1, y2. For the max slope, so these represent the coordinate, uh, the coordinates of the two points we're going to use. And remember, these are my y values and these are my x values. My horizontal error bars are visible. My vertical error bars are not visible. So I state that somewhere in my, in my lab report. And when I go to do my uh, max and min slope, you only use one of your error bar sets. Only use the horizontal or only use the vertical. Don't use both. 
it's better just to use one set. So for my max slope, I'm going to use obviously the horizontal since they're the larger. That's the best thing to do is use the larger of the two. So I'm going to say, uh, I, want to, I, want, I want to draw my best fit line, sorry, I want to draw my max slope line from here to the right of this data point. It's going to go from there to there, right here. Right? So from this point to this point, because that gives me a steep slope. So I have to add the uncertainty to the first x value, and I have to subtract the uncertainty from the second x value. So I do equals, right? My first x value is this, and I'm adding its uncertainty. My second value is this, right? It's the last data point, and I subtract its uncertainty. And the y value associated with that x value is, well, it's, these are the y values, so it's the first y value, and then for y2, it's the last y value, so it's that one, right? For the min slopes, I want to go from here, this point, from right here, to right here. So I want to subtract the uncertainty from the first data point, right, from, from the first x value, and I want to add the uncertainty to the, to the last x value. So I do equals x value. I'm going to subtract the uncertainty this time. And then here, I'm going to add the uncertainty to the last x value. And then the y values are the exact same, right? These are the same here and here. So here's a little nifty trick. If you highlight this, right, and then you hit the F4 key on your computer, it adds dollar signs. And the reason we do that is because if you try to copy this over, control C, control V, well, now it's not F4 anymore. It's moved the cell over to G4. So what you can do is you can come in, highlight, hit the F4 button on your keyboard. It adds dollar signs. And the dollar signs mean that whenever you copy something over, right, it continues referring to the same cell. It doesn't move it over when you copy it one to the right. That's what the dollar signs do. And then likewise here, I'm going to highlight F4, and then I control C, and then I control V to paste. So now these are the same, right? And what I'm going to do is, I'm, and this is what I recommend, I'm going to click, and now while holding my mouse down, I hit the control button, and with my control button pressed, I let go of the mouse, and I'm going to make a copy, and I'm going to delete my best fit line. And I'm going to show my max and min slopes on this separate graph here. That's what I recommend doing. So you right click, you can do uh, select data, or you can right uh, click on your graph, come up to design, and click select data there. Either way, what we're going to do is add another series. So you hit add, right? Right now, the only series is the one showing my uh, my actual data, with the data points. I add a series, and I'm going to call this series max slope. You can give it a name if you'd like. For the x values, I'm going to choose these, right? For the y values, I'm going to choose these. I hit OK. And now I'm going to add another series called min slope. Min slope and the x values will be these, whereas the y values will be these down here. I hit OK. I hit OK. And, oh, well, I've added the series, but they don't look so nice because right now they're just data points. So right-click on the data point, right? You click on it, you right-click. And then what we're going to do is we're going to format. So marker options, we're going to do none Oh wait, uh, before you do that, we're going to add a trend line, add trend line, display equation on chart, don't display the r squared value because it's going to be 1, and make sure it's linear. So we're going to move that over, and then I'm going to right click on the min, add trend line, display equation, and I'm going to move that over to here. And let's see, the min should be over on this side, right, and the max should be up here because that's the min slope and that's the max slope. And now I'm going to right click on my max data point, right click, format data series, format data series. 
and marker, I'm going to go down to marker options, I'm going to choose none, hit close. Then I'm going to right click on this data point, I'm going to format series, data series. If you click on the data point, not once but twice, now you're just formatting the one data point rather than the whole uh, series. So you have to click off, right, and then right click on your data point and format, oops, that's not it, right click, let me try again, there we go, format data series. Marker options, none, close. And there it is, that's it, that's it. So if you want, you can give these different colors, you know, so that you can distinguish. Um, but what you would then show in your lab report is this chart, right, showing how you found the max and min slope, and you would show this graph, and then you would just use this value as the minimum slope, 3.9654, and you would use this value as the maximum slope, 5.8717. And that's how you have Excel automatically calculate your max and min slope, and what you show in the, again, what you show in the lab report is this, maybe you add some borders, right, um, and what you show in your lab report in addition to that graph is this.